Well, everybody, they'll tell you that a Cavan man is a mean bastard, but today's guest, Tom, furnished us with not one, but three wonderful stories about his worst gig ever. These are deliciously delivered and absolutely delicious stories too. I don't know. I, I don't buy into the whole Cavan thing. I lived in Cavan for six months and they'll spend money in Cavan. Outside of Cavan, maybe not so much, but they know the they know the price of a thing. Albeit it will show during uh, our guest stories today that sometimes maybe you should look for a few pound. Maybe you should maybe look a few for a pound, few. Yeah, it's no harm. Yeah. Yeah. Put a bit of a yeah. value on the situation, but they... <laughs> so, so there, there, there you go. You can't say you don't get your value. With not one worst gig ever, but three worst gigs ever from the wonderful Mister Kevin McGahern. <laughs> Kevin McGahern, wonderful to have you on the Tom and Jerry Show. How are you keeping? Thank you very much, Tom and Jerry. Wonderful to be on the Tom and Jerry Show. Deadly stuff. I do like Kevin, regardless of the position, the shape, make, or size of him. He's always so professional, isn't he? <laughs> he just came in there, <laughs> came in there like was the, the late age he was, he was on there and just like somebody pouring, you know, Kevin Butter into your ear. It's absolutely hey, what a beautiful. Crowd. What a crowd. Yeah, what a, what a, is a, I've been a lot of crowds in this world, but this is the best crowd I've ever had. What a crowd. Well, Kevin, if we're the best crowd you've ever been in front of, yeah, you know, number one, the pandemic has hit you hard, pal. And number two, <laughs> number two, there's bound to have been a couple of crowds that you were in front of that weren't so good. And that's the raison d'etre of this podcast. Your worst gig ever, sir. You worst got any to tell ever. us about? Um, I'm going to give you three. I'm gonna Lovely. Give you t- two short ones and one sort of story, I suppose. Um, so number three. Uh, having the flu while doing a play. Uh, oh, Jesus, ooh, yeah. Cause... yeah. I, I did a play with Tony Cantwell about Jedward, written by Giles Brody. And it was about the court case that Jedward sued somebody over a load of yo-yos. It's a true story. <laughs> you can look it up. <laughs> Type in Jedward, Sue, yo-yo, barrister. I, think that, a... I, I can't believe Giles even bothered writing it. It pretty much wrote itself. <laughs> it wrote itself. Yeah. But, I um, do so, sort of remember this. Yes, yeah. I vaguely remember this. I um, remember the case. See, your, your play passed me by, Kevin. I'm sorry to say, but right. I do remember I the case. <laughs> Didn't win any fucking Tonys, man. <laughs> um, uh, there was... It was inspired, I think, by a photograph of Jedward with their solicitor after they That's... came out of the court case. Yes. And Jedward were doing, like, <laughs> little Japanese schoolgirl <laughs> pose they like to do. They like doing double uh, victory Peace, double piece ups, yeah, yeah. signs. <laughs> And the solicitor just looked pissed <laughs> off after dealing with these fucks for the last two months, probably. That so is what I remember. Uh, but I had the flu one of the days and I was literally trying to hold about four le- uh, four litres of noxious fluid inside my body that just wanted to escape from every orifice I had. And it was it was it was rough, lads. It was rough. I made it through it. And luckily, but I was wearing leotards as well. Like, oh, uh, Lord. So like diarrhea and leotards do not go well together. Would would not conceal it very well, Kevin. No, would not it conceal it very it well. Anything, it would hold it quite well in a sort of a big bag at your back. Um, I, I love that. that was the, I love if that's how he got reviewed. The night Kevin shit himself in it. Like yeah. if that was what sent it over the edge and actually got you on tour in America or something with it. It was like yeah. Well, Kev's got to shit himself every night now. It's like, <laughs> you have to see this play, man. This man shits himself on stage every night. It's unreal. It's Special un- mention must be made of McGarren's leotard, which held together very well throughout the performance. <laughs> well, Kevin, I want to ask you one question now, because this is this is very good. We've had a lot of people come on, and we've had a lot of comedians come on talking about shit gigs they've done, but a play is a different beast altogether, mm. because if it's, it's one thing to to wrap up your comedy act early if you're going to shit yourself and get out of there or have a ropey gig or what have you. But you have to deliver dialogue for, I'm assuming, about an hour or so, right? Yeah, and as well, like, like in a play, you can kind of deal with small problems and work them in. Like, have you ever been to a play where, like, somebody's mobile phone goes off and then right. the actor says, oh, I think there's a, a, a bird tweeting in the, in the trees outside. <laughs> and then everyone <laughs>, laughs and then they just get along with the play. You'd be uh, you'd want to be fucking Robin Williams to improv your way out of shitting yourself on stage <laughs> <laughs> during a play. Like, oh, I seem to have filled my, my pantaloons full. My pantaloons. <laughs> full of shit. Just take your pantaloons. <laughs> anyway, all you could do is take a bow. That's all you could do is take a bow as if it was the, the closer. Yeah, that's 
<laughs> that's a good one. The play is over. Uh, everyone, everything worked out grand. Bye. <laughs> 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 so um, that was it. Luckily, I didn't. I held it together, man. It was it was rough. It was it was a tough one. Or the sweats um, had you the sweats? I even thinking thinking of sweats, flu sweats, and then sweats as a result of not scouring all over yourself <laughs> like a yeah. like a young calf. It was a, it was a stilted performance. Um, <laughs> In at number two, um, another play story. Um, kind of when I started doing comedy, I was doing a lot of plays and stuff. This one was, um, we did a tour of the west of Ireland, pubs mostly. And we would do, it was a two man, very short play about the Beatles. Kind of just two men talking about the Beatles. It was written by Stephen Kennedy. So we'd go to a pub in the west of Ireland and we'd set up mics and we'd sit by a fireplace or something. And we'd get a few pints going and we'd do the play. And people would watch it and hopefully like it. And we, we were up, um, I think Donegal. And in the middle of the play, John Hume walks in the pub. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> John Hume. And this is, you know, by 10, 10 years ago, I suppose. So John Hume walks in and like the poor devil, he was suffering from Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's at the time. And probably found the whole thing a bit confusing. Um, and was a beloved obviously he's beloved across Ireland but he's especially beloved in his local pub of course so John Hugh comes in and starts heckling us <laughs> in the middle of the play <laughs> can you like it'd be it'd be confusing for anybody wandering into that situation to see everybody in the pub watching two fellas having a conversation about the fucking yeah. Beatles in Donegal of course and this poor this, it, this poor yeah, fellow walks in <laughs> He's in another fucking realm. Yeah. He I gotta tell you, nightmares. <laughs> John, John Hume walking into a pub and heckling you as you're trying to put on a play about the Beatles is the classiest version I've ever heard of doing a stand-up gig where there's two cons won't turn the TV off. Yes, yeah, yeah. It We're was... trying to watch Match of the Day. <laughs> it's very much that. Like. This is like the fucking, <laughs> this is like the butler's pantry version of that. <laughs> he, um, so he starts shouting shit out like you're full of shit. <laughs> you're, you're talking shit, lads. <laughs> Who the fuck told you that? And uh, we're trying to, trying to continue enough. And like, it's John Hume. You're not going to tell him, hey, John Hume, shut the fuck up. We're trying to play him. I would have. <laughs> Man, he was responsible for the peace process. He was voted like one of the greatest Irishmen ever. So you and, he, and he's, he's got not, he's not being very peaceful right now. So he's not. <laughs> oh, was anybody trying to dampen him down a small bit? No, was, no, everyone was enjoying the crack. Right, <laughs> where are you <laughs> two guys? If just anything, fuck. this play just just jumped up a notch. <laughs> and uh, Kevin, not not for nothing, did you recognize him as John Hume? Because I'm not sure I would have been able to recognize him yes, straight off would, the way because he's not. But he wasn't 1995 peace process holding Bono's hand, John Hume, no, at that stage, no. right? like he had aged a bit. And I didn't immediately, because, I mean, you don't really look, you're not supposed to be distracted. So I didn't really recognize him immediately. But the director, um, Stephen, <laughs> when we finished, uh, the director went over to him and had the most bizarre conversation ever. Stephen went over to him. And Stephen didn't think it was John Hume. Stephen thought it just looked like John Hume. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and Stephen went over and he said, um, you know, he was kind of pissed off. Like, he thought of course. Some, some guy was ruining his, his play. And he went over and said, uh, Danny, I'll never tell you, you look like John Hume. And John Hume said, who's John Hume? <laughs> <laughs> Stephen said, oh, he was a drummer for the Beatles. And uh, John Hume says, who are the Beatles? And Stephen says, I don't know. And then John Hume says, well, if you don't know, then how the fuck do you know who their drummer is? Stephen's <laughs> like, I'm, I'm fucking scooby man. I can't continue this Alice in Wonderland fucking conversation. <laughs> so he left. And then he was saying to somebody at Barry, he's like, man, the fucking the guy who looks like John Hume really pissed me off. And they're like, oh no, that is John Hume. <laughs> <laughs> he can do whatever the fuck he wants, man. <laughs> so that was a tough one. Um, the uh, the only the only equivalent I can throw in there if if I, uh, <laughs> is one time I was working in the shop and uh, a guy came in for price stoves he was a real tire kicker and he left and the boss was sort of giving out to me a little bit and I was like yeah I'm sorry you know I was just held up by that fucking Guildford four looking whore that came in here wasting me time. <laughs> 
And another guy comes, that's not a Guildford 4 looking who are. That's Paul Hill of the Guildford 4. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, holy shit, look at that. What did we do? We won't, fucker won't buy a Stanley O'Sheen stove. <sighs> my God. <laughs> <laughs> wow, just killing time, annoying Jerry. <laughs> killing time vexing me <laughs> in a Dublin suburb. <laughs> um, so in oh, at number geez. one, this what is a bullet. Great. What a bullet. This is very recent. This is just before lockdown, actually. So, um, Jerry, do, or, do you know Colm Tyrrell? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's in America now, isn't he? He's in America now. New York, isn't he? Colm Tyrrell, I shouldn't have mentioned his name, but fuck it. Um, he won't he's mind. Colum, he's he's, yeah, he's fairly going. dark anyway. He doesn't mind. Yeah. So Colm sends me a Facebook message and he said, uh, hey, Kev, what's the crack? Come here. A lot I used to be friends with is organizing a charity gig. Will you do it for him? It's for mental health. So I was like, yeah, I will, of course. You know, I, I like to appear to be a good person. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> appearances, everything, Kev. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of so I said, I'll do it just for the appearances. Um, to keep up this charade, you know. Um, so I, I say, yeah, your man uh, gets in contact with me, and um, looking back at it now, he didn't say an old friend. Yes, that's what I picked up on it. I yeah. thought I used to be friends with. He says, Jesus. God, God, like, I used to be friends with. There's lots of lads we used to be friends yeah, with. Yeah, yeah. We would not wish upon <laughs> our worst enemy, like you know. So, um. <clears throat> He man gets in contact. Hey, delighted you're doing a man. Um, it's in this location. It's on this date. So happy to have you on board. And eventually sends on the poster. Now the poster looks like it was done in Microsoft Paint. Um, <laughs> it's just a real dodgy looking, garish poster. And uh, I'm like, oh, okay, that's a bad sign, but I'll continue on. So I arrive down to the venue, and it's in one of these new pubs along the Keys. And I meet Paul Marsh outside and Paul is running to the hills and he says, man, abandon ship. This is no good. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, this is coming from a fucking fireman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, just for all the ladies that don't know Paul Marsh, he's the hardiest fireman. You, you know, he's this is six foot six into, and he's a fireman. Runs, and a paramedic. Yeah, runs, runs into burning buildings. <laughs> was running from this pub, right, Kevin? I never made that connection, but yeah, you're so right. For this fireman, he said, not, not worth the risk, lad. <laughs> he told me, he was like, oh, your man hasn't organised anything. He, I was talking to the owner or the, the barman or whatever. He said he hadn't booked the room at all. He just went downstairs and started saying like, hey, we're, org- we're doing a comedy night tonight. Can you give us some microphones? And he started collecting money off the punters. And they were like, you can't fucking do this, man. All of his family is there. (laughs) (laughs) Paul's like, everyone has pulled out apart from you, Kevin. Everyone. (sighs) You are the only person who hasn't pulled out. He has replaced all of us with another group of comedians. And uh, Iman. Who is a fucking, who is a a fucking B team of comedians waiting on standby? (laughs) Well, I'd say they pulled out. Over the last week or so. Right, right. okay, gotcha, gotcha. And oh. he'd been, because, yeah, he definitely didn't have all these people's numbers. But um, Iman uh, was was subbing, and Robbie Bonham was subbing, and I don't know who else uh, by the time I arrived. Um, and your man had said, look, he just really wants to do MC, and he's never done comedy before. He'd love to do comedy. This is how you go about doing it, apparently, by setting up a charity night with comedians oh, and Jesus doing MC. Christ. Jesus um, Christ. So I get in there. I'm like, and I, my stupid comedian brain, I'm like, no, man, these are the gigs that make you. you know, <laughs> right. These are the tough, these are the tough gigs that really make you a pro. And what a stupid idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I get down there. I get down there and um, most people there haven't paid in. They were just sort of punters there. There's a lot of his family there. There's a girl taking money at the door. And um, the barmaid... I went to school with the barmaid's brother, secondary school, and she recognised me and starts chatting to me. And I was like, nice. what, is the, what is the crack with this lad? And she's like, oh my God, yeah, yeah. It's it's a bit all over the place, this gig. And your man comes over and offers me a drink. I said, no, I'm grand. And uh, he, he said, to be honest, I'm, I'm a bit too scared to MC, so I'm just going to bring people straight up. And I was like, oh fuck, so this whole thing is pointless. <laughs> and I don't see anywhere on the poster that says what the charity is for. It just says for mental health. 
So it could just be like for the mental health of people it's, there. It's just <laughs> it's no to cause mental fucking illness is what it sounds like. It's like there's like this that's like the anguish. scam you get in uh, European cities where they come up and go, "Will you sign this petition against war?" Or someone dips <laughs> your pocket behind you. Yeah, it's a gig for mental health. Just rob everybody in the place. Yeah, so like there's no charity um, affiliated with it, which makes me a bit more suspicious. Um, so he's got about four or five red flags to stitch. Um, <laughs> he comes up, offers me a drink. I say, no, I'm grand. And uh, he says to his couple of buddies, um, here, boys, do you just want a drink? Do you want? Yeah, we'll do some uh, vodka and Red Bull, I think it was. So he does out a few vodkas and Red Bulls and I don't see cash been exchanged. So I say to the barmaid, I was like, has he got a tab on for this? She says, yeah, he does, yeah. And I said, what's the name of the tab? <laughs> she says, the name on the tab is the word depression. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes up and he says, give me four vodkas and Red Bull, stick it on depression. <laughs> Jesus, Mother Mary. So... That's fucking E-man. amazing that alcohol so I am, is I am <laughs> shitting bullets, but I'm confident, you know, I've still got that stupid, like, this is it, man. This is what's going to fucking make you a great comedian. You're going to go up there and you're going to win this crowd over and you're going to, oh, God, you're going okay, to. Not, not for nothing here, Kevin. You're like a 12 year pro at this stage. Yeah. So like I, this I, one I, wasn't going to make anything of you. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, well, I was if, the argument I was having with myself was like, no, you've been doing this fucking, you've been doing this twelve years. You should be able to do these gigs, you know. Right. right. You've been coasting, oh, McGarn. Yeah, you should be able to walk into a funeral home after a <laughs> child's funeral that everybody <laughs> found really charming, and you should be able to win them over. So, Eman's up, and Eman does grand. Eman does pretty good, if I remember. But he goes on really long. Right. And uh, I was like, I was getting pissed off at E-Man. I was like, get the fuck off the stage, E-Man. Because we're all, you're dooming us all. We love you, E-Man, but time to move on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and like, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for, is E-Man, then Robbie, then me. And E-Man's going long and he's getting laughs and he's obviously enjoying it, the fucker. And I'm like, please, E-Man, please get off the stage. Please get off the stage. So he eventually gets off the stage. The organizer gets up. And he goes, oh, that was um, e- e- ma. He barely says his name. And ne- next up, we have um, uh, Rob- Robbie Bonham, everybody. And Robbie Bonham gets up and uh, Robbie's doing his thing. The crowd are getting a little bit tired at this stage. The novelty of, you know, people talking at them is kind of worn off. Yeah. And, like, the organizer keeps like walking back and forth and like fiddling with stuff on the stage. And Robbie's starting to get pissed off. He's like, what the fuck are you doing, man? the fuck you act like I'm trying to fucking work here and I'm like oh sorry 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 and um, then your man goes into the jacks <laughs> he grabs he grabs a roll this sounds so made up he grabs a roll of toilet paper and he comes up on stage and starts rapping like mummifying Robbie Bonham on stage <laughs> and Robbie, like, Robbie is incredulous <laughs> what the fuck are you at <laughs> man says I'm wrapping you up <laughs> <laughs> it was the funniest joke of the night. It was, I mean, but that's, it was that's solid. It's, it's a solid bit. That's not bad. Oh, that's Robbie good. It's actually not bad. Fucking, you know, about to explode. <laughs> Robbie fucking screams at him and knocks. He just goes for fuck's sake, and he he knocks over the microphone. The microphone goes. <laughs> that loop starts, and Robbie storms off. Everyone's like, "Oh shit." Like, nobody's even laughing at the, at the rap <laughs> thing because it's so awkward. <laughs> Do you want picks up the mic? All right, that was Rob, or Robbie Bonham there, everybody. And next off is Kevin from TV, Kevin, Republic of Kevin McGarren. And I walk up and I'm like, oh, this <laughs> the microphone is still ringing in my ear. And I tried to start. I know, first of all, I just berate him. I was like, this is, this is the worst run gig I've ever done. <laughs> in my life and I was like like who here I honestly paid for a ticket like a couple of hands go up and I'm like this is just this is pointless like we're just wasting each other's time and it's not getting any laughs like it's, it's if anything I'm making it more awkward right <laughs> so um, I realised like there's p- people not enjoying me berating him at all and um, 
then I remembered like a lot of his family is here and I realized probably the only people have paid in are probably his family. And I start my set and it doesn't, they're not liking it. And then I just say, you know, fuck this. Like, and I said, do you know what? I think we've all had enough comedy for today. (laughs) Yeah. I'm probably up on stage, maybe two minutes. I said, we're good all, here. I think we've all had enough. I think I'm just going to pull the plug. Uh, fair play to you for coming out and supporting <laughs> mental health. And I just walk <laughs> off the stage. And uh, I think, like, I, in my stupid brain, I'm like, there will be no consequences to this at all. Um, so I'm going to the bar. I'm going to get my jacket. And I'm suddenly surrounded by about 15 people. Uh, his whole family are there. And they start screaming at me. And you're like, how fucking dare you? That chick are you? That chick, how dare you think you're so arrogant? You think you can just uh, crush a young man's dreams? <laughs> and, uh, they were like, this was his dream to do stand-up comedy. And you've crushed it. Uh, and I was like, well then, just fucking go to an open mic. Don't fucking... Yeah. Don't do a badly run charity night. Um, yeah, you've got there, you've got you've got a crowd here, kid. Get back up and give me a tight seven if you're not fucking beat out of shape. That's he never even he didn't do any jokes on the night. Um, and his dad is there, and they're holding back his dad. And I've never oh my seen God. a man as angry. Are we like, talking like Mayo Mayo dead on the side of the fucking pitch? We're talking. Probably. Do you remember in Veronica Gearan uh, when <laughs> Bishop Brennan uh, meets her at the doorway? Yes, and right. Screams the c word in her face. <clears throat> Yeah, yes that yeah. level of anger like that's all I could think of as Bishop Brennan <laughs> and his head exploding and uh, he was just like he couldn't even voice his anger he was just like rah, rah. he was just making guttural noises as um, lads held him back and they were like you're crushing his boy's dreams <laughs> and they were like do you know how much effort how much work he put into organising this <laughs> Yes, I do. Very <laughs> fucking. Uh, yeah, fuck all. <laughs> and he didn't book a room. <laughs> like, the two fucking things you should do. And uh, I have my back to the door, and I, I'm, I, I know violence is going to happen, and I'm not clearly not going to be able to fight one of these people. <laughs> Maybe some of the nieces. Uh, <laughs> and the barmaid. Uh, I my bag is behind the bar, and I'm just thinking about getting the bag and get the fuck out of here. The barmaid fucks my bag at me and I grab it and Eman opens the door and just pulls me out. And we just closed the door and we ran down the street. <laughs> oh man, I was terrified. And I texted Colm Tyrrell immediately and I said, don't fucking ever, ever set me up with one of your old friends again. <laughs> I gotta oh. tell you, where, where's fucking John Hume when you need him? That's what I want to know. <laughs> The, the, yeah. b- abiding through, through that whole and Jerry will probably agree with me here through that whole thing terrible and I the sweats thinking about it and how my heart was going up and down with you through every single piece of shit of that gig but the one abiding thing was hold on so Marshy and McGarren got a shout on this fucking gig and neither myself and <laughs> yeah. my bride got even a fucking we didn't even get asked and man yeah and and, 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 and Bonham and, and, and that's after going that's after going through an original team of comedians back round again and here's yeah, me and even on the subs bench. <laughs> weren't even on the not even on the subs <laughs> the cheeky fuck and not a and for charity too of course so not a not a bean in your fucking paw for it yeah I've, I've they went to Colum Terrell in that. New York before they came to me or Tom <laughs> Yeah, so that that was I think, yeah. Just be wary of make sure there's a charity attached, I suppose. Yeah, and uh, if a a, a member yeah, of look, a member told, of of the services tells you to turn around and run away from the gig, then you really should. <laughs> yeah, like. firemen aren't wrong. Yeah, uh, now look, I could be totally wrong. There could have been a charity. He could have gave all the money to charity, but I didn't see anything um, on the poster. Do you know how much a vodka and Red Bull costs on the keys in fucking Dublin? Yeah, probably 15 euro or something. Yeah. So by the time anything yeah. was collected, his depression again, tab Again, was... I don't want to cast aspersions. I haven't said any names. He could have, um, in case he's listened to this, that could have come out of his own pocket. I don't know. Just well, the whole uh, thing. Just all, 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 not, not casting aspersions on anyone, but I do believe that this country still has mental health problems, so I'm not sure what was solved this night. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin McGarren, it is was, wonderful think, to see you, my good man. Oh. I think there was one more after that <laughs> night. <laughs> <laughs> Had a very slow walk along the Liffey after it. <laughs> and people ask his stand-up comedy hard as Eman and fucking 
And Ivan and Kevin pelting it at full tilt down the fucking keys. <laughs> I go, no, it's a great, it's a great fucking, yeah, it's a great job. It's a great job. You <laughs> might get killed. Barrels of laughs. All right, Kevin, thanks a million for your time, pal. Lovely to see you again. Lovely seeing you, boys. Take that care, lads. Delicious. <laughs> well, that was absolutely, I enjoyed every minute of that. Every fucking minute of that. It's it's one of those moments where you would have loved to like to literally be just sitting in the corner watching all that unfold. What? Mother of well, Jesus. I, I gotta tell you, I know it was for a mental health fundraising thing, which may or may not have raised all that much funds for mental health, but at least we hope listening to it alleviated your own stresses and strains on this <laughs> wonderful day here with the Tom and Jerry show. <laughs> Listen give to me, you being all pro. Jesus. Give Christ. me give me fucking give me something here. The McGahorn can't have gone through all that in vain, the poor bastard. Jesus Christ. And hey, look, everybody, if you enjoyed that and you would like your mental health eased a little more. I can't promise that the Tom and Jerry show social media feeds will do that, but fuck it, it'll hardly hurt. You can get us on at Tom and Jerry show on Twitter or Instagram, not Facebook. Stay away from there. That's not going to do your mental health any good at all. Or you'll get me on at Jerry McBride and him at at Tom underscore O'Mahony or some variation of that, Tom. I'm not going to fucking look it up. You'll get us. Look up Tom. Look up Jerry. You're bound to find us. Give us an old follow. We'll fill your days with guff and bullshit, whether you like it or not. Jerry is very good on the socials, especially Instagram probably is, is is where you can see some of the actual proper visual stuff. And people have been interacting something brilliant over the last while. Because if you are fans of the Tom and Jerry show or if you're brand new because you just heard McGahern jumping on board, well, go back and have a gander. There's a rake of bonus episodes. Loads and of stuff. There's Christ and Christ above. There's six seasons gone, gone by. Six seasons gone by. So look, there's bags and bags of stuff there, but do keep interacting. If you have the uh, capability on whatever application you're listening to, i.e. whether it's Apple Podcasts or Raycast, whatever one can you're allowed to leave a comment or a rating, give it the five stars. Leave us a nice comment. If you can't, do a screen grab, which people have been, or they've just been screen grabbing it or writing wherever you can write. Do share it on your socials, tag us in it, so at least other people can get to find out about it. Other than that, Jer, just be sound and maybe just yeah. when somebody does ask which people have been doing on Twitter they're going hey I'm sick of something you know I'm uh, sick of misery podcasts do you have you got any podcasts people have been tagging us so keep up the good work and keep pushing yeah. it on out there and if even even I will say Tom even if someone says I'm looking for a highly intellectual podcast that will make me a better person lie to them lie to them absolutely lie to them yeah Jesus Christ yeah we don't I, listen if somebody's looking for a podcast for any reason whatsoever just yeah. send them our way. Christ, in all fairness, there's a fair old variance throughout the episodes. People might find what they're looking for somewhere in there where there is. You never know. I got to tell you, if you trick somebody into listening to us, we count that as a listen. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Once it's through <laughs> the gate, we click the little clicker like a bouncer on the night out. Hey, you're in. You're in. It's clicked as a, as a number. That does us fine. All right, Tom. Take it home, Paul. Good luck and thanks, everybody. Mm-hmm.